Hi guys, welcome to the Building Big Data Pipelines with PySpark, MongoDB and Booker course. In this course, we will be building an intelligent data pipeline using big data technologies like Apache Spark and MongoDB. We will be building an ETLP pipeline. So ETLP stands for Extract, Transform, Load and Predict. So these are the different stages of the data pipeline that our data has to go through in order for it to become transformed and to become useful at the end. So once the data has gone through this pipeline, we will be able to use it for building reports and dashboards and for data analysis. The data pipeline that we will build will comprise of data processing using PySpark predictive modeling using Spark's MLlib machine learning library, and data analysis using MongoDB and Booker. So what you will learn in this course is you will learn how to create data processing pipelines using PySpark. You will learn how to create machine learning algorithms with geospatial data using uh, Spark's MLlib library. You will learn data analysis using PySpark, MongoDB, and Booker inside of Jupyter Notebook. You will also learn how to manipulate clean and transform data using PySpark data frames. You will then also learn how to create a basic geo map, how to create dashboards, as well as how to create a lightweight server that will serve those dashboards. So that's basically some of the things that you will learn and obviously there is many more to be learned by taking the course so basically what you can see in front of you this is a booker dashboard that we built with all the data that we have processed with PySpark. so when we extract the data it's in raw format and it's not useful so we cannot do anything with it yet so it needs to go through multiple stages before we can use it and one of those stages is the predict stage, right? And we will use the data that we have processed and cleaned, make predictions, and then combine those predictions with the rest of our data. And we will build graphs. And ultimately, we will build this dashboard that you can see in front of you. So basically, what we are doing is we are going to predict earthquakes one year in advance using training data which is um, past earthquakes ranging from the year 1965 up until the year 2016 right and then we will be predicting um, the earthquakes for the year 2017 we will then evaluate our predictions with data that we will um, extract from an external source and then we will use that as our test data and validate our model. Okay, so basically this is the result of processing our data and making the predictions. We were then able to um, plot it on a map. So here we have a bunch of earthquakes. So the yellow earthquakes or the yellow points are all the predicted earthquakes. So we will predict the magnitude of the earthquake for the year 2017. So when I hover over a point, you can see the year and the predicted magnitude. And notice that the magnitude has question marks, meaning that the actual magnitude are the red dots, right? So now you can see the magnitude for the year 2016. So we have filtered this data for the year 2016 so that we can compare um, some of the earthquakes that have occurred in the year 2016 versus the earthquakes that have occurred in the year 2017 that we have predicted so right here booker gives us a toolbar that we can use to manipulate the chart so if i click on the wheel zoom it will allow me to zoom in and out right and i can focus on a specific area like this for instance and by just hovering over each point i'll be able to see the magnitude of the earthquake and the year in which it occurred okay so if we want to just see the earthquakes for the year 2016 without um, our predictions we can filter it by just clicking on the legend 
right? Then we can hide our predictions. And now we have the earthquakes for the year 2016, right? And if we want to hide all of them, we can just click on the legend. And if we want to display them, we can click back on the legend and we can just play display all of our predicted earthquakes for the year 2017 right and then if we want to compare that with the earthquakes that occurred in the year 2016 we can just click on that and now we can see both okay so that will be our geo map plot right that we will uh, create using booker Another thing that we will create is a bar chart that will display the number of earthquakes for each year, ranging from 1965 all the way to 90, all the way to 2016. Right, and then we will be able to analyze these earthquakes using the data, and we can see that in this year, the year 2011, is the year that the most earthquakes occurred according to our data set right so the other thing that we will be doing is we will be analyzing the average and maximum magnitude for each earth for each year right so every dot is a year as well as the maximum magnitude of the earthquake right for that year as well as the average magnitude for an earthquake in that year okay so basically we can see that in 2011 as well we have the highest magnitude which is 9.1 so that was definitely a um, massive earthquake that occurred in that year right and we can see that um, the last time that a magnitude that big has occurred was uh, basically close to magnitude 9 which is in the year 1965 so we can see that the year 2011 was quite a bad year right and yeah those are some of the visualizations that we will create and but the main focus of the course is not to create visualizations visual visuals are just um, to demo what we can do with the data after we have processed it in our pipeline. So the main focus of the course is actually creating the data pipeline using Spark, specifically PySpark, to process our data, which is a library or tool that is used to process large amounts of data, as well as the MLlib library, which is uh, the Spark machine learning library that is used to train large amounts of data, right? So that is the main focus of the course, as well as using a NoSQL database like MongoDB as the storage, right? As well as the source data for our dashboard and our reports. Okay, so I hope you guys will enjoy the course and I hope you will gain a lot of insight as to how to use Spark for ETL as well as how to use Spark for machine learning. Okay, so once you guys have gotten that insight and have learned how to use these technologies, how to combine them to build fast big data processing pipelines, you can then use that knowledge and build more sophisticated pipelines with even larger um, volumes of data. And I hope it will add a lot of value in your learning path. So thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the course. Thank you.